Anthony Solveston and I head up development at Triggerfish Animation Studios. Um, basically, when I'm not writing or directing myself, I oversee all the projects we have in development. So whether it's a feature film or a TV series, um, I'll basically, you know, look at what people submit, give some notes, give guidance where I can, look at concept artists that we can work with. And then I also look for projects to develop. So I'm always looking for new talent and um, trying to just help them get their stories out to the world. So the reason we created the Story Lab was really because we just found that there was a bit of a bottleneck with writers and directors at the studio. Um, you know, um, we just, we need more projects in development. Uh, really, it's, it's so much work to, to get a project off the ground and you never really know how well it's going to go, the, the process of writing and developing a script. So it can take longer than you think and um, you need a few options, really. And you know, what we found as a studio was that we just wanted to get more diversity in our stories. We wanted to get more of a, a sort of voice of Africa to the world. And so the only way we can do that is to really find people from Africa to tell those stories. So we, we ran this initiative looking for writers and directors from across Africa. And we got a lot of entries, almost 1,400. Um, so we went through a, a sort of selection process and narrowed it down to a shortlist of about uh, 25 projects and then eventually chose four feature films and four TV series to develop further. The projects we were looking for were really anything for an international audience. For our feature films, we looked primarily at a family audience. So that's anything from, you know, a child of two to an adult of 92. Um, the story has to work for everyone. Otherwise, we just, we found that, you know, we couldn't make the business model work. So really what, what that is, is a universal story. And that comes down to human emotion at its heart. So, you know, whether the story is set in Africa or not, whether it features animals or not, it has to have something that everyone can relate to. And usually what that comes down to is the character, the main character or characters. A story between two characters who have to learn from each other or um, yeah, evolve or change in some way. That is where the audience gets the reward, watching that transformation take place. So yeah, that was for the feature films. For the TV series, um, we kind of took our cue from Disney. We were working with Disney EMEA. And, um, you know, they have three channels. There's the Disney Junior, Disney XD, and Disney Channel. And each of them has a different age group that they target. And, you know, this is with all broadcasters. They all have a kind of a brand of their own. And what they look for must fit into that brand. And so for the TV series, we kind of took our cue from Disney. And they helped us select the shortlist and um, then the final ones. And... Yeah, but really stories, again, that are going to work for anyone around the world. And usually that comes down to a character-driven story. So kids want to be able to fall in love with that character. They want to spend time with that character. And they want to see that character live off-screen as well. So character is really the main thing. One of the main weaknesses was that people would sort of spend all this time setting up the world and forget about the character. And really that's what people are going to engage with. So as important as the world is, um, get to that character, make us understand why we would like this character, why we would want to watch that character, you know, go through their journey for 90 minutes in a feature film or 52 episodes in a TV series. Um, we want audiences to spend time with those characters. And so the world is important, but yeah, get to the character. Um, the other thing I would say is that people came in with an, an agenda. So, yeah, I think it's important to have a message in your story. It really is important. The theme, why you're doing this, what you're trying to say, that's extremely important. But it can't detract from the entertainment value. Um, if people feel like they're being preached at, they're going to switch off. Um, and you don't want to alienate audiences. You want to entertain them. Um, the other thing I would say is probably just not having any kind of understanding of the fact that there needs to be a business plan for your show. Um, you know, anyone making this 
TV show, for example, is going to have to put millions of dollars into it and they need to make that money back. So you have to think, how would this character live off screen? Is it possible to make merchandising from it? Is there sort of transmedia potential? Anything like that. Um, yeah, you're not, you're not creating this in a vacuum. Someone's paying you to do it and they need to understand that they will make their money back. Um, so yeah, it's important to have a sort of a personal story and a reason that you're doing this project because it's going to take a long time to get it onto screens, but you can't ignore the people that are going to help you make that, that project come to life. Yeah, it, you know, it's a difficult thing because it, things, projects can also surprise you. Um, I think usually what sort of connects universally is something personal. And, you know, that kind of seems like a paradox. But really, if you look at that sort of human emotion at the heart of every story, that's something most people can relate to. And, you know, so we all love, we all have fears, um, we all have friends, um, you know, that's a big part of what children are dealing with is how to, you know, how to make friends, how to navigate their family situations, um, their school situations. And so if you can place that on top of then some kind of unique hook or world, then that's going to appeal to anyone. Working from Africa, I think we really have a unique opportunity. And it's just because we have so many untold stories. Um, I think besides the, the sort of obvious uh, fact that we have different countries that haven't been showcased on screen before, we have different mythologies and fairy tales that haven't been told before. Um, it's kind of hard to define because I think it's just something different. We have a, a different take on the world having grown up in this different place. We have different visual influences. Um, and none of that really has been seen on screen before. So it just gives something different. I think the, the trick is to make sure that it's still accessible, that it's still appealing to people um, from around the world. And you know, you don't want them to turn off the TV because it looks like a foreign thing and they can't relate to it. So I think there's, there's still, you know, 54 countries across Africa. So each with its own culture, each with, it, each with its own mythology. And there's a lot to draw on. So there are a lot more stories to tell. For each project, we developed a full pitch Bible. So that covers, you know, the characters in the world and some sample episodes, as well as a, a sample script. And we showed these around at international festivals and markets, including Annecy, MIPCOM, and we, we got an incredible response. I think, I think the African angle kind of helped differentiate us. And, um, you know, we'd worked really hard to make sure that the quality was as good as we could, it could be. I think, you know, you really get one shot to show these projects um, and you want to make a good impression. I think it also helped that we had a diverse range of projects. So, you know, depending on who you're talking to, you, you, someone might want a preschool show or they might want a, school for, uh, a show for boys only and it helps if you have then different projects that you're representing obviously you know if you're pitching your own project people might say what else have you got and it's good to have another idea what next is really just further development um, i think you know when a new partner comes on board they come with their own notes um, so we'll be re-looking at the pitch bible at the sample script um, bringing on international writers as well. I think, you know, there are not many people in, in South Africa with credits on animated series and a lot of broadcasters need that. Um, so we'll be getting common teams together of international and local writers, putting artists on board. And um, yeah, I think, you know, we had such an overwhelming response from the Story Lab. Um, we got a lot of entries and a lot of um, people that we want to work with now. And our slate is full, but we're always looking for more talent, m more creatives that, that, you know, have these unique ideas, that have a vision. And um, so, yeah, I would, I would encourage everyone to just enter any kind of pitching opportunities that are out there. There's things like the Animation Demand at Annecy. Um, 
if you can get your project into sort of a, a pitch basically then you often get guidance you get notes and you get practice and you know we're at those markets we're looking at those um, projects so yeah